Hi, welcome back. This is Roger with Steampunked Out, and I finally took a little bit of time out of the busy schedule I've had lately to uh, do another video for you. And uh, today I'm going to do a basic video on how to do a, a simple um, gun holster. I uh, decided to go ahead and do one for an automatic. I've got this little uh, airsoft uh, pistol that I'm going to do. It's, it's pretty similar in size and shape to you know that uh, real guns that are out there so um, this will be a little bit different than the western style holsters that I do um, due to the you know more modern shape of the gun but give you a good idea a good place to start and you can kinda do variations and um, modifications off the design idea uh, from that there's all kinds of different types I'm gonna do a simple fold over so I'm gonna zoom in on the workshop here and show you how I get things going Alright, so the first thing that uh, I do when I start off is uh, I've got to make a pattern for the, for the gun itself. And it, this is uh, going to be real similar to the um, custom holster making uh, video that I did. If you have a custom holster that uh, you want made and you can't send me the gun, then I've got uh, a, actually a long-winded tutorial on how to get the, the tracing and measurements and stuff that I'll need to do that. So, but. For if I actually have the gun, and then I can make a pattern from the gun. I don't need all the little measurement tick marks and stuff like that. Uh, first thing I do is I draw a good uh, 90 degree angle to the edge of uh, my work board, and this is this is some uh, reject um, print. It's it's about it's poster board, um, so you want something thick enough that you can trace around onto the leather once you get the shape of stuff that you want. And one of the things you got to remember with a fold over, if you're doing a one piece design is you're going to have the back of the gun and the front of the gun if it's a right-handed gun this will be the outside but you also have to have a piece above here to fold back and that's going to be the, um, the belt loop so and there's different styles and shapes and ways of doing that but I you know you got to kind of have a general idea if you want it to go like the western holsters when I fold it over it goes the entire length of the barrel back down and then there's a strap to hold it like this um, and that's what I'm going to do pretty similar to that you know for the, for this type of gun so if you if you've got a revolver then you know you can use the same kind of idea um, so that being said you know I know that you know my my gun length is uh, somewhere around eight and a half inches so that means I need you know a good 16 to 17 inches uh, at least on my on my line here to make sure that I've got enough and I like to do the initial uh, draft in pencil. It's a little bit easier to mess with, and then I can, you know, I can always go in if I want to make, you know, uh, pen marks or something on it, you know, a little bit more permanent. But I do, I do kind of a sketchy thing, so pencil seems to work best for me. And I'm going to measure a line out at 17 inches. Make sure I'm far enough away from the edge, so I got plenty to work with. Doesn't have to be exact, just in the general there and so I know this is going to be the you know the bottom of my holster so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up dead center along the spine of the gun along the sights and I'm going to trace a rough trace around the gun Doesn't have to be exact. What we're doing is we're, we want to make sure that we have enough leather to go all the way around the gun. So I'm going to lay this sideways now and I'm going to line the ends up and I want to try to keep the, uh, the sight line parallel to my fold line here. So you don't want this you know crooked in here. And we're going to trace around it this way. And I like to trace out where the trigger is so that depending on how I want to do the cutouts, I know you know where you know how much of the trigger and trigger guard I can have exposed. So that's kind of important for me to know. And then I'm going to do kind of the same thing on the other side. But one of the one of the most important things is to make sure that you have enough um, leather here in between. So I'm going to do a double check before I space that out. I want to measure the girth of the gun at the widest point. Now the widest point 
of the fold over itself is going to be usually right around the trigger guard. So this is going to be the, you know, the, the most leather is going to be right here as far as going around. So I want to measure that. Get a pretty good idea of where I'm at. And this one is about seven and a half inches, you know, will give me some comfortable room to work with there. So when I lay this out, I want to make sure that I'm from the edge of this trigger guard to the other side is about seven and a half inches. So that way I know exactly where to lay this out. And I'm pretty close to right on uh, laying this over when I'm lining it up with my other tracing here. It helps when you have a gun that's a, you know, a lot more regularly shaped, doesn't have a lot of protrusions or anything like that. Um, you know, revolvers sometimes can be even thicker in the middle with the cylinder there. So I'm going to lay this out here, get it lined up and parallel again, and once again, trace around the edge. Like that. And oh, I'm going to put a trigger guard on this side too, because that's where my fold over is going to be. So I get a general idea of where my trigger is sitting. And some people will want the trigger more exposed. Some people actually want to cover the whole guard and only leave the handle open. Um, a lot of the western style holsters actually drop down uh, and leave the trigger guard more exposed. Uh, if you're doing this for like a, a real weapon and you want to, you know, carry this, you know, whether open carry or if you want to design one that's concealed carry, um, you're probably going to want to cover that trigger guard completely up. So that's up to you. But Anyways, now that we've got our tracing, we can actually move on to the next part, and that's going to be laying out the outside lines for the holster itself. Now, if I pretend like this is the inside of my leather, and if I want a right-handed gun, and you got to think about this when you're doing all your layout and stuff, then I want this side of the leather to fold over to this side. So that means that my uh, belt loop is going to be somewhere here. On the back of this, on the back of the gun, um, and that also means that the holster is going to come up on the back side of the gun. The part that's closest to the hip is going to be higher than the front side of the gun, which is going to be this side. So when I when I lay this out, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my line up, and then I'm gonna do my do my uh, cutout right here for the handle to stick out. So uh, and if, you, if you goof up and you get left and right handed mixed up, you can always flip your pattern over. Uh, this has got um, you know, some printing and stuff on the other side, so I'm doing this ahead of time so that I've only got you know, a good side to work with where I can see all my lines. So I'm going to do a quick layout on this and kind of uh, it's going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to trace that out and then I'll come back and I'll show you exactly what I did there. Okay, so. What I've done to kind of show you there is I've, I've taken a, a black marker and I'm going to start right at the barrel point and what I do is I kind of smooth off all the little bumps and edges and stuff um, because the leather is not going to completely contour every little niche and divot and stuff in here. It's, it's going to seat in here and it's, um, it, since it's not going to be a wet formed holster um, it's going to um, follow this kind of uh, taper here so um, if you especially if you've got something that has all all kinds of different cuts and shapes and stuff like that then you want to just go around around the edge and smooth that out and that'll give you a line to measure from because I'm going to use rivets whether you use rivets or stitching now you're going to have a place to put that so you have the size of the gun and then you have what, uh, you know, what if you're in the textile industry is called a seam allowance. So you have to have something to fold over and attach with. So um, rivets take a little bit more space than, than stitching. Um, I prefer the rivets uh, personally, um, partially for aesthetic, just because I like the look of it. You can get different colors, you know, uh, silver, brass, or even just a tarnished black if you want something that's not real showy. Um, but I, I always feel with the stitching that eventually the stitching can wear out and kind of come undone. So um, I leave myself uh, for a seam allowance around this. Um, now my, my rivet heads uh, for, the, for the thicker leather, I'm going to need a little bit bigger rivet. And I want the rivet heads to come pretty darn close to the edge. And 
Uh, the width is going to be uh, uh, more important than the depth on this to a certain extent um, to make sure that I can get around it more. Uh, if it's if you're short a little bit on the end here, uh, it's not quite as bad. It won't seat quite as far in, so you have to you have to kind of play with that a little bit and see what works. For me, I've come up with between usually right around five eighths of an inch from my gun line to the edge of where I want to cut my leather, and that gives gives me enough room to put my rivet really close to the edge and um, you know still be able to to shape it and form it and have enough room to fold it over and get my rivets in and still have plenty of room for the gun. So 5 eighths anywhere from a half inch to three quarter depending on how you're doing is usually pretty good um, but remember this is just a pattern so once we get the pattern cut out and I wrap it around the gun I should be able to tell how close I am and I can add you know an eighth of an inch or, or something on either side uh, uh, you know of the pattern to make sure that it goes around properly. So, so what I did is I just took the ruler and I measured out going, you know, following the contour of my black marker line here and I wanted to have a, a good half inch below the barrel so I make sure to cover the whole gun when it sits seats in there you don't want the, you know, the barrel of the gun sticking out for this particular type uh, of holster. And, and I started with about a half inch on the bottom and then I went to about a 5 eighths inch and I just made tick marks all the way around this and came up with the, the edge of my leather here. And so um, that gives me a cutout line. Um, and when I get here, remember this is gonna be the front side of leather, I don't wanna cover up the handle. So now I'm going to come up with a, with a shape that swoops over, over the guard here from probably right in here. And it's gonna cover the, cover the guard and then come back up to, to the fold area. So I'm gonna do that and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so now I've got the, um, the the basic shape, the outside shape of the holster set up um, pretty close to the way, the way that I want it. Um, and I, I like to let, leave myself a little bit of play. So from that center line, I, I know I'm going to be pretty tight on this when I, you know, my measurement from here to here uh, was exact. And then I've only left a little bit of seam allowance. And I'd like the whole the um, the gun itself to be able to, to sit in there comfortably, but not be really tight for this type of holster. Um, if you're doing a form-fitted holster, it might be a little different. So I, what I've done is I've added about a quarter of an inch off of my center line um, to make for my fold line, and that's going to leave a little bit more play. I like to do it because it leaves it mostly right, or, you know, parallel with this the spine of the fold. So because uh, it's not going to fold over perfectly flat. So we've got to have a little bit of a curve there and we have to adjust the fact that um, when you do fold that over, because it's not wet formed, it's not going to be a friction draw, um, there has to be a little bit of space in there for the gun to easily be uh, put in and drawn. So I've added that quarter inch line to make for my fold over and then I've also decided that I want the the belt loop to, I want this to hang straight down from from the belt um, and that is primarily going to be decided by the angle that you put your belt loop. So what I've done is I've made a, um, a 90 degree angle here. This is uh, as high up as I want the holster to go. So I'm going to fold down from this point. Um, and that, you know, you, a lot of the western holsters actually fold down a lot lower. Um, so the whole back of the gun setting up um, for, you know, the more modern holsters, they're, they're a little bit more heavy in the back and less in the center like a revolver. So um, I'm actually bringing this up a little bit. My center of weight is actually going to be right in here. So I want to try to keep my center of weight kind of close to where um, my fold, the center of my fold, where my, where the gravity is going to be pulling on this thing. So, um, because that's the other thing that's going to affect the angle. Uh, if you have if you have the the belt loop set too far to one side or the other of the center of gravity on your gun, uh, and the angle doesn't match that center of gravity, then what you're going to end up having is a holster that does not sit on the belt along the fold. It's going it, to it's going to want to cant the holster on your belt slightly because the gravity is just going to kind of pull it there. And friction will hold it to a certain extent, but uh, you know if you're walking around with it, it's going to start shifting. So. So I want this to hang straight, so I've measured over about uh, a half an inch farther from my fold line um, as I want the, the fold to run down uh, the length of the barrel. So I want to try to keep this 
uh, you know, as close to that line as I can and not, not extend too far on either side of the barrel down here. So when I put my retention strap on it, um, you know, it sits properly. So, and I've gone with a two and a half inch wide strap, uh, belt strap on this. Um, two and a half, three inches is, you know, what I, what I prefer uh, for most of my stuff, about two and a half inches. So, uh, I, I just continued this, this front cover line all the way over, and right at the fold, I try to make it pretty straight across at a 90 degree um, to the fold. Um, that way you don't end up with any, you know, on the fold itself, you don't end up with any funny stuff sticking out or whatever. Um, you know, you can cut more down at an angle, but I, I don't like um, coming up and back down. It makes it really hard to cut out here. So, um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this half of the holster to the fold line, uh, all the way to the fold line here. And then I'm going to fold this over and trace the other side. So that way I have an exact matching on the other side. So I'm going to do that and show you where it's at. Alright, so I've, I've got this cut out to my fold. And then I like to uh, take the ruler and score my fold line just a little bit. So that it folds nice and evenly right down the fold. And I folded this over, traced around my edge here. And then I have to decide on the, the back of the holster, the part that's closer to the hip, how I want this shape to go. And I haven't decided if I want to cut it in more and back up or if I want to leave it more around. The thing with leather, you know, this is just the pattern. We haven't cut the leather yet. So if you're not sure, leave it. You can cut it off later. Um, so basically at this point, I've got a butterfly version of the holster. It comes up um, right here to my uh, fold over lines. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this out and show you the, the um, finished cut out of the pattern. Okay, uh, as you can see I've got uh, everything uh, finished cutting out here. And I've got um, the uh, back side of the strap here is going to fold down looks like pretty well. And what I want to do now is when I, this is how the, the actual pattern is going to fold together. Now I want to check and make sure that the, um, the gun that I'm putting in here, I'm going to lay it pretty much on my tracings and I want to make sure that when I fold this over, now you'll notice that now it's not folding over flat. You have to gonna, you're going to have to kind of bend this into a curve along the spine of the gun so that uh, it's not going to be flat here. But you want to make sure that now you can take and all the way down the seam there, that there's enough room for those rivets to go and this is a little bit deep in here if I put a rivet right there it looks like everything is going to match up okay if I line up my edges and I should be able to get rivets down this with no problem and then I actually have uh, plenty of extra here so I'll even trim this off a little bit once I get the leather uh, get this onto the leather, but I think I think our shape is going to be good. Um, I don't see any reason to, to cut any more of this out. I think there's going to be plenty there to uh, to go against the hip and still give us um, enough room here on on the handle itself to get a draw. So uh, I'm pretty happy with this. I, I don't think I'm going to do much editing on it. So I'm going to go ahead and get this traced out onto the leather, and things start moving pretty quick from here. Okay, uh, as you can see I've already got this laid out flat. It's just a real simple matter of laying this out flat, tracing around it, and I've already started cutting out the, uh, the pattern from the leather. Now what I'm doing is I'm, I'm using a uh, probably eight to nine ounce thick leather for this. Uh, for, you know, actual weapon, to, you know, heavier weapons and, you know, not necessarily the toy, little toy plastics. But for the heavier stuff, uh, I really like to use a good thick durable leather for that. I'm doing a holster for a real gun or for a replica that's a good heavy weight. Um, so I've got a nice piece here that you know I've checked both sides and it looks pretty good. You want to make sure that you um, check on the back of leather and make sure that it's been properly defleshed. Um, I talk about leather in my leather types and properties video. Sometimes it's got some really bad stuff on the back and you got to sand it down to get it you know to the to the firm part. And when you do that, you make it a, lo a lot thinner. Um, so you want to be careful with that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish cutting this out and then we'll move to the next step. 
Okay, so I've got the leather cut out, and uh, I'm going to kind of show you the, when I talked about having a little bit of uh, leeway, and I added that quarter inch uh, down the spine of this. Um, part of that is accommodating for the thickness of the leather. Uh, when you're dealing with you know really thin paper, it's going to fold. You know, it, it's not going to make a whole lot of difference when you fold that over. It's going to go right where it's supposed to go. But when you have something that's you know close to a quarter of an inch thick, you know three eighths or so inches thick or um, I'm sorry, uh, a little over an eighth uh, inches thick, not quite a quarter. Um, when you fold this over, the inside compresses a little bit and the outside stretches a little bit, but it's a very different um, spacing involved uh, once you get that folded. So I always uh, check to make sure, and I'm going to fold that back over, and then when I seat the, um, the gun in here, and again, I want to hold, line up the edges as close as possible and make sure that I have plenty of room to get my rivets all the way around here because I don't want to go ahead and do all the finish work on this and then realize, oh, it's too small for the holster. So everything still looks pretty good, but it, you start to really get an idea of what the holster is going to be shaped like and how it's going to work. Um, I'm going to fold this down here. As you can see on the original, I had a lot of extra and on this piece here, um, because the fold isn't perfectly flat like the piece of paper, it actually is, is really darn close to the, to the bottom of the holster, which is where I wanted it uh, to start with. Okay, so now at this point, you can kind of decide <clears throat> how you want the, um, the uh, belt strap to go. Um, if you're doing, you know, Western style holster, then often what, what I do is um, I leave it the full length of the, of the gun and since it's typically worn a little bit low on the hip, um, you want to keep it from flopping around. So, you know, I put a couple of holes here and put a lacing, uh, leather lacing on there uh, to go around the leg and that, uh, that also holds this down in addition to the strap. Um, you know, you can also, depends on how you want to do this, if you want to do it shorter, um, you can cut it off here and you want to do the stitching on this. Um, I don't like doing rivets um, for something like that because the rivets going to come through on the inside and you can do that, but if you're using a, especially a real gun where you're concerned about um, scratching the, uh, the finish on the gun, you know, scratching the bluing and marring the gun in any way, you want to be very careful about any rivets that come through that might be touching the gun. Um, it is possible to do it um, depending on where you where you put the rivets at. You know, it could be so you know in just enough of a space there wouldn't be any rubbing. You know, when you're pulling it in and out, but it's something that you definitely want to uh, be aware of when you're deciding how you want to do this. Um, I think for for me, I really like doing the retainer strap um, with a buckle on it. I think it gives it uh, you know a nice some nice lines. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a, a little bit of this length, but since uh, you know I'm not making a western holster to go to sit way down on the hip, uh, I'm probably going to cut it off probably right in here and leave myself enough room to put a couple of slots and to put that strap across here, and that's going to hold everything nice and flat and not not leave any um, hard metal rivets or anything sticking out here that's going to rub into you know whatever gun happens to go into this uh, eventually. So. Uh, I'm gonna now I gotta do the spacing for the rivets and I want to put the rivets down the edge here probably to about right here so I'm gonna work on getting those holes spaced out and then I'll show you how I did it okay so what I use for this is a set of calipers and uh, I like to to have somewhere about an inch in between my rivets uh, so I set this to about an inch and for the most important rivet is going to be right here, the very first rivet um, on the on the fold over that's going to uh, adjoin it here. It's going to have the most stress on it, uh, but you also want to make sure that it's got the best placement. And so what I, what I do for this is I kind of eye it up and I start with about an inch and then I, I start rotating this around and making sure that the at whatever setting I have that the rivet spots are going to go in the key places. The next key place I really want to get it is right here in this crook. So I want to make sure that my rivet is um, is pretty close to, to centered on this. I don't want you know one on either side of it. I, I want it right here in the middle. Um, that is that is going to be where the front of the trigger guard rests 
uh, when it's inside of this holster, it's going to be a lot of the weight is going to be pushing on that rivet, uh, and it's going to you know keep the keep the uh, it's the first part of the bottleneck that keeps the gun from sliding too far down into the holster. So I want to make sure that's right, and um, I I end up going just maybe a sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch um, smaller than one inch. And once I kind of get my spacing out, the other thing is, you know, when I get down to the bottom here, I want to make sure that I don't end up having to put one way down here in the bottom for the spacing. So you, you might have just played with the space, and I found a caliper to be a, an excellent tool for doing that. And then I've taken a stitching groover, um, and then just I actually ran it backwards very lightly along the edge of this to make sure that I have uh, an, an even distance around the edge. Uh, and I set the width on that. What I do is I set my rivet uh, right where I'm going to want it, the very first rivet, and get it, you know, fairly close to the edge here. And once I have that set, and I kind of make an indention there, and then I set my groover so that it runs right along the edge of, of where my divot is. Uh, and I put a line all the way down, and then I just use the caliper to press a little. Um, you know, poke little uh, divots in all the way around where I want my rivets and then I'll punch those holes and I'll show you that. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've got my holes punched in here uh, and everything looks good. Now the next thing I want to do is uh, get the holes punched on the other side for the rivets and to do that you um, you want these holes, you want this edge to be as perfectly lined up as possible. The closer that you get on this seam, the less work you're going to have after you get the assembly done because um, when once this is uh, put together and finished, um, you need to go in and trim this flat and get a good flush so that you almost can't tell there's two pieces of leather here and I'll show you how to do that. But um, the, the way that I find it's best to do this is to line up the edge as carefully as possible and then you're going to go in and mark the, um, the holes from the side you've already punched onto the uh, inside uh, of the leather here and that way you can punch those out. Now if you're going to be doing a bunch of the same holster, so maybe you're doing something you've got two or three of the exact same shape and uh, you know of gun, the same make and model, um, then you can actually do that on your pattern and uh, mark your mark and punch your holes. But I really like to only do this on one side um, because you know anytime that you're doing the tracing things can get a little bit off and um, the better the alignment is on the fold over um, because of the way you cut this um, the better off you're going to be. So I always find it easier to just punch holes on one side even if I'm using my pattern and then always fold it over and uh, mark the holes uh, from my on my actual leather for my second side. So I'm going to finish doing that and we'll be back in a minute. All right, holes are punched. I've got this trimmed off where I want it and so now we're ready to move into some of the finish work. Um, one of the things that you want to do on this uh, when you're working with this thicker leather especially is you're going to burnish the edges. You want to take off this sharp corner and so um, we have uh, this uh, edge finisher here and what I'm going to do is th this takes off the corner. It's uh, it, There's different sizes and they're preset to go different depths and so I'm just going to run this right around the edge here and as you can see it kind of takes off that sharpness. Now one of the things that you, you want to be careful of is you're going to do this on both sides of the leather but when you fold this over this is going to be the inside of the seam so you don't want to do it anywhere that you're going to put rivets on there because th this isn't going to be a sharp corner you want to have a good flush even uh, surface so that it looks like one piece of leather. So do it all the way around the outside of the leather and then on the inside of the leather when you get to that you only want to do it around the bottom like down here and then uh, anywhere on this on these top edges where the rivets are not going to be at. So that's the first step. I'll finish that up and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, the next thing that I like to do on this is uh, I do like to go ahead and put a, uh, a trim line or an accent line uh, on these uh, with a stitching groover. I just think it leaves a, um, a more professional looking finish. Gives it a, you know, just kind of an accent around the edge. And this just, as you can see, it cuts a groove into the facing of the leather. 
and uh, it's got a little um, little arm that sticks out that, that's settable so you can set the distance of that groove from the edge of the leather and this is just one of those attention to details things um, any any little finishing or um, detail that you can add that you know kind of accents the leather gives it a little bit more professional look um, you know you can get carried away with it and do a little too much um, but you know it's your own uh, personal taste on this and see what you like you can play around with some different things I find keeping it fairly simple um, and just doing like a line like this all the way around is uh, my preference so at this point um, if you wanted to do some tooling in the leather uh, for, for me I know that I'm going to put a strap across right here so that's, that leaves a, a pretty good area up here if I want to do some, uh, some tooling designs and stuff uh, I think I am going to probably um, put a, just a, an accent line and some texture in here um, just for fun and uh, I'll go ahead and draw that out and show you what I had in mind there and we'll be back in a moment with that okay so what I did was I, I kind of did a fold over here and uh, figured out uh, what line where I wanted this line to go parallel to the to the fold and uh, about how far I wanted the, the trim line to come around from my edge so and uh, I used a, a free-handed stitching groover to run run a, and a ruler to run my line down this way and then my uh, my edge line to go around like this and so I've made it you know a nice little shape in here and what I want to do is add a little texture to this um, now you can you know tool this however you want uh, when I do the steampunk stuff you know I, I've got some brass gears that I impress in this and or whatever but I found one thing that you know works pretty good just for some texture for you know simple and easy for fun is uh, just some really coarse grit uh, sandpaper and so all you do is you just uh, follow the same procedure for for doing your leather tooling uh, I'm sure there's a ton of good videos out there on how to tool leather and uh, I'm gonna wet the leather and get some texture in here and then I'll show you what it looks like okay so just to clarify on that before I move on when I say I, I like to use uh, sandpaper I'm not scratching up the surface of the uh, of the leather at all what I'm doing is I'm, I'm laying it on the leather and pressing the grit texture into the leather so you know it leaves it kind of you know dappled like a, like sand was on here um, and so whenever I whenever I spray that I don't, know, it, I don't know if it's coming out real good on the video but you, can, you know it's just got a little bit of a texture to it it's just something different it's gonna break up the line you know give it some more form and stuff so anyways uh, what I've done also is I want to make sure that anytime that I wet the leather I wet it you know consistently because that does change how the dye absorbs into the leather um, but the other reason that I do this is while I'm not actually wet forming the leather per se, um, whereas uh, you know I put it between between you know foam and press it so that it takes all the shape of the gun, I I do need to form it a little bit um, to make sure that the gun goes in and out easily and it has a little bit of that shape. And so usually the way I do that is I go ahead and I uh, put my rivets in around the back side and bear with me it'll take just a second here and then I'll fold this over like so and go ahead and line all my my rivets up now this is wet so it's a little easier to, to move around and work with and uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the caps on these. Now I'm not going to set these rivets. Uh, I'm only putting them here temporarily to hold this in place. And this is going to make it um, easier to, to assemble as well because as I let this dry, it's going to hold this shape. And so, as you can see, that the inside of this is not shaped the same as the gun. So, my goal on this is to actually kind of hold this closed and work 
the gun into the holster where I want it like so and then I'm gonna kind of just kind of move and shape the leather keeping the rivets closed in place like that so it's not really wet for me it kind of is but um, it's really not because I'm not really trying to take the, the perfect shape of the gun here. So, uh, but it really does seat in there pretty nicely like that as it is. Um, it's got a nice uh, fit. And so then, then at this point what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave these in here and I'm going to go ahead and fold my strap down. As you can see, I've already got that trimmed up and ready to go. My retainer strap uh, will go around the holster right here, and it should work nicely. And, and I'll let that sit with the with the gun in it, and let it dry. And it should be uh, should be ready at that point to go to finish. Now, one of the other things I, I that I forgot to mention that I like to do on a holster, I do like to take this edge and roll it out just a little bit so that there's not an edge pointing up that's going to catch on you know the various corners and crooks of the gun when you're when you're holstering so I'm gonna stretch that and shape it just a little bit outward not very much um, then doesn't, doesn't have to be very much but um, you don't have to do this if you don't want but I think it's works just a little bit better so as you can see there's you know, it kind of comes up and out just a little bit now. So, um, so now I'll just let this sit and dry for several hours. And once it's uh, uh, dry and ready to go, I should be able to uh, do the finish work on it. So, I'm getting pretty close. I'm going to prop this up so it kind of holds the the shape, keeps that straight. So, all right, we'll be back after it's dry, and I'll show you where we go after that. All right, as you can see, uh, everything's pretty well dry, and our fit's really looking pretty good on this. So, it's got a got a, a nice seating in there. Doesn't move around a whole lot. So, we're ready to go ahead and take this over and get some color on it, and then we'll do some finishing. So, we'll be right back after I get some color. All right, so the color's on, and uh, I've got my uh, clear coat and buffing and everything done. So, I'm just about ready for assembly. Um, right now the, the next step is to uh, burnish the edges and what I'm using is uh, gum tarantulacanth to do that. Now you can do uh, you know water as well if you want. I, I, send, I like the, um, the gum trag a little bit better and I've got it in one of these little rollers so I'm not a big fan of these for doing the, uh, the dye which is what it's made for but uh, these work really well for putting the, um, the gum trag on the edges of the leather you just kind of roll it on there and then you burnish the uh, the edge with an edge slicker now I'm only doing the edges right now that are finished edges and I'm avoiding the um, the rivet side of things because what I want to do is I want to rivet this together first and then I'm going to treat this as one edge. If I if I take the uh, the slicker down the edge uh, beforehand, that's going to round the uh, the sharp side down. Remember, I didn't I didn't cut this corner off because I'm going to glue this together and rivet it together. So I'm going to have to do that afterwards after I get it glued and sanded and nice and smooth. So uh, I'm going to finish doing the edges on this, and then we'll uh, put it together as soon as I get this uh, set up for it. All right, I got the uh, the edges finished and ready to go. And so now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, run the uh, glue along the uh, rivet line here, so that uh, I can put my rivets in. Um, and I use a um, a barge cement, which is made for leather among other things. It's really good for that. Um, you can get just a regular leather cement. Uh, they have changed to a two lean free formula, which uh, says it's the same great results, but. Uh, you know, sure, it's a little safer to use, but uh, I'm not going to lie, this stuff is a lot runnier than the uh, the old yellow cans, but you can't get the yellow cans anymore unless you're a business, and uh, honestly, I, I mean, I could, but, you know, it, this is a little bit easier to get a hold of. Uh, it's not quite as expensive, so, but I'm going to run this along the edge here, 
and I want to go all the way into my rivet lines and all the way out to the edge of the leather all the way around. Now I'm putting a really thin coat on this. I don't want it very thick. And if you've never worked with rubber cements or anything before, you get the best bond on these by putting it on both surfaces. So I'm going to do this on the other side as well. And cover it all the way up to the to the rivet lines. So even though this doesn't have tooling in it, it does have some uh, other nasty chemicals and stuff. So you really want to try to avoid handling this with your bare skin, um, just safety wise. Anytime that you're working with any kind of chemicals like the dye and the glue and stuff like that, you really should look up the uh, MSDS and just to make sure that you know you're handling everything as safely as possible. So anyways, well, usually uh, you let that dry for uh, oh two or three minutes you know it doesn't take very long uh, it doesn't drive completely but it's going to get really sticky and one of the great things about uh, the, the leather cements like this is it sticks to itself fantastically so I'm going to get a really nice seal but it's still going to be a little bit flexible so that's going to you know work really good with a flexible leather like that so I'm going to let this dry for just a second and then all, I get, all I'm going to do is just join it together and then I'm going to set my rivets in here and we'll go to the next step and I'll show you what that looks like Okay, so the next thing, uh, I'm just finishing up the rivets here, and uh, if you want to know how uh, a good way to set the rivets, you can watch my really long-winded uh, rivet setting demo, and I talk a little bit about a whole bunch of things, but I decided to go with brass rivets on this, and uh, uh, just real quick, you want to make sure that the rivets that you're using, the length is going to be just a little bit longer or really close to the same length as uh, as the thickness of leather you're going through. So you can see there my, my stud just sticks out just a fr fraction above the leather. Now whenever I strike that down with the, uh, with the setter that's going to compress it and mushroom the tip of this so that the rivet doesn't come back out. So and then the other thing you really uh, you know again the, the more accurately you can cut these edges to start with um, the, the more work you're going to save yourself. These are pretty darn close to exactly the same. Uh, what I'll do on this to, to finish this off uh, and make a, make a good, nice, smooth, clean edge on this is I'm going to take this to the belt sander and uh, run, run the sander down the edge uh, to bring both sides of the leather all completely together um, so that it all looks like one piece of leather and that also removes any excess glue along the edge here because I'll come back and uh, put a, uh, a little bit of dye on the edge to color this uh, before I, I seal it up with the, and uh, smooth the edges up with the gum track. So I'm going to go to the belt sander and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, as you can see, I've got this uh, sanded down uh, nice and smooth here. And I've started to coat the edge with a little bit of dye. Now, I um, I didn't have to take off very much. I, I was really good on my uh, my lines they, the, on my uh, edges. They lined up really well. Uh, if you've got to take off a little bit more, um, you can always take the edger and you know when you take off too much with the sander, as you're sanding on on this edge here. Uh, it'll make this corner sharp again, so you can always take your edger and, and take off a little bit. You want to get, you know, pretty close because if you have to sand a bunch, then your your trim line, if you put a trim line on it, is no longer going to be um, parallel to your edge. So you want to get that as close as possible. So anyway, uh, just finishing up here and getting my uh, my die worked into the edge of the leather, and looks pretty good. And well, we're just about just about done with the finish work, and uh, all we'll have to do is uh, make the uh, retainer strap that uh, connects here and pulls that down, and we'll have a, a workable workable product there. So, be right back after I get that dried. All right, that's dried. Now, what I've done is I put a little gum transcanth on the edge here. And that, as I said, I'll treat this all as one piece. So now this is when I go in and use the edge slicker, and uh, you got to use a little bit wider setting on it and uh, sometimes even the flat side to get it nice and smooth and clean and that's gonna work out to look like almost one piece of leather when you're done so 
this just those little things like you know edging and burnishing and uh, you know trimming and doing all those little details that attention to detail is really what sets apart you know a professional or leather worker from somebody who's just learning and it's just you know little tips and tricks like that that you can do to really give it a, a professional clean professional edge so just about uh, just about done I'm gonna make the retainer strap for that and I'll show you how I did it alright uh, I've got my slots punched here and what I like to do on these is to come in about a half inch from uh, from the edge there that allows my strap to go all the way around and I'm gonna push this down as far as I can get it what I, where I want it so I'm gonna hold it in place and then I mark I know uh, my strap is gonna go around right here so the top edge of the strap is going to be um, right about here on the when I hold it all the way down so I kind of mark that and then you know make a, uh, a 90 degree with a with a square here so that I can tell the top edge of my slots are going to be there and then just punch my holes so we'll uh, get the strap around here I know my buckle is going to go around and sit about right here so I'm going to put that through the slots and uh, punch the holes and I'll show you what it looks like when it's finished alright so when you get the strap uh, threaded through you want to kind of hold it where it's supposed to go and you really want to pull this good and snug you don't want it to start actually crunching in the leather so uh, so that it you know distorts the uh, holster but you want to pull it good and snug because this is where all the weights gonna be at and uh, you know mark your hole there and uh, that way you get a get a good hold on it and uh, I'll just finish punching the hole there and trimming this to length and I'll show you the finished alright so here's our finished holster um, I kinda like the uh, the buckle and strap method it gives it a you know kind of a nice uh, accent on the front there it goes around and that uh, that's gonna hold it the, the um, belt strap from sliding around there and so you can put quite a large belt if you want but as you can see it kinda sits there it hang, looks like it hangs nice and straight on a belt and uh, it's got a nice, nice, easy draw to it. So if you really, uh, you know, if you're doing for a real gun, you might want a uh, a snap strap or something that you can attach uh, through the back side here and come across and put a snap, and you know that'll hold it in place. If you're not doing a friction holster, um, since this is just a, uh, you know, a toy gun, I'm not terribly worried about it. It, it. fits pretty snug in there, you know, as long as you get it seated in there good. You know the gun doesn't just fall out real easy, so it, I think that's going to be adequate for my purposes. Um, but there's several different ways of doing either hammer tabs if you've got a hammer gun or something like that. You can do a hammer tab, uh, or you can do a retainer strap on a snap. Um, I like the hammer tabs better if you've got a hammer. But anyways, so as far as just the demo goes, that's a basic uh, basic holster design for a fold over holster. I uh, appreciate you watching. I hope this helped out a lot, and uh, happy leather crafting.